each and every one of you. Glad to be here today. October 7, on the good day, October 7, 2021. I'm going to open up in the world where we're in Bible study this evening, too. Learn about the love of God and how we should be loving Him. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, my Father of uh, Abraham and Jacob and Isaac. We come before you just uh, with appreciation in our heart, Heavenly Father, and to glorify you with your holy word. Because you've been so good to us, and we're grateful. We're grateful because we can come before you and ask for forgiveness of our sins because you made it possible when you gave your only and begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross for our sins. That he was buried and he was resurrected after three days. And he's sitting at the right hand side of you, Father, making intercessory prayers for us. And you didn't just allow him to ascend in heaven without uh, bestowing on us and anointing us with your Holy Spirit. Oh, we pray. We know we could never make it without your Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us, and comfort us, and talk to us from you to Jesus to us. And Lord, so we come before you this evening and just thank you, God, for your mercy, for your kindness, for your faithfulness. When we haven't been faithful, you're always uh, there having mercy on us. Your words say, your mercy endure forever. And Lord, we know those are for your children, the ones who love you, the ones who believe in you and have faith that your son died on the cross for us and reconciled us to you. And so, Lord, we grateful and we thank you and we ask you to um, lead us in our Bible study here this evening because we only speak the words that you uh, give us to say. So, uh, we thank you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, we're going to honor. Uh, Start off, go to uh, First John, the fifth chapter. Let's just start to play us off, and then we're going to get into more of the word. It's all going to be the word of God. The 21st verse of John, First John, the fifth chapter. First John, fifth chapter, 21st verse. It says here, little children. Believers, and these are all little children you're talking about, us believers. Believers, dear ones, guard yourselves from idols and false teachings and moral compromises and anything that would take the place and take the place of God's. Would take the place of God's place in your heart. See, God is supposed to be in our heart all the time. You know, our love for him. And then go to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. So you won't think it's just something I'm saying. God's words is uh, precious uh, to us. That's how we have to live by His holy word. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, the fifth verse, uh, says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind. And with all your soul and with all your strength, your entire being. That means with everything you get. These words which I am commanding you today shall be written on your heart and your mind. So those believers who belong to God and say you belong to him and you love him, it's in your heart, it's in your mind. And nobody can uh, take that out unless, unless you start wavering and comfort. And as, as it said in that uh, 21st uh, verse, uh, of 1st John, the 5th chapter, we're not supposed to give ourselves, we have to guard ourselves against idols and false teachings and moral compromises. We're not supposed to do that. And then stay in Deuteronomy, the 6th chapter. The 7th verse said, You shall teach them diligently. 
to your children, effort in impressing God's precepts on their mind and penetrating their hearts with his truths. And shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road and when you lie down and when you get up. And we had to do that. We had to show that to anyone that's around us, uh, especially his children. And those children are the believers. Uh, the 13th verse says, You shall fear only the Lord your God, and you shall serve him with all feel reverence, profound respect, and swear oaths by his name. And then if you go to, uh, you want to go back to 1 John. Let's look in the fourth chapter just for a few minutes here. The fourth chapter in the 18th verse. It says, There is no fear in love. Dread or dread does not exist. So, you know, if you have a love of God in your heart and in your mind, then we're not supposed to have that kind of fear for it for mankind or anything. Dread does not exist, but perfect, complete, full-grown love drives out fear because fear involves the expectation of divine punishment. So the one who is afraid of God's judgment is not perfect, perfected in love, has not grown into a sufficient understanding of God's love. The 19th verse said, we love because he first loved us. It says, if anyone says, I love God and hates works against his Christian brother, he is a liar. But a one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has seen. It says, in this commandment we have found, we have from him, excuse me, we have from him that the one who loves God should also unselfishly love his brother and seeks the best for him. And uh, John even comments on that in the 13th chapter of John. If you just turn there a minute. John, the 13th chapter. Because if God gives us this, and he intends for us to give it to others. He freely gives, and we're supposed to freely give it also. Um, the 13th chapter, uh, the 34th verse said, I am giving you a new commandment that you love one another just as, as I love you. So you too are to love one another. So he expects that from us. It's an expectation from us. And then if you go to 1 John, the second chapter, the 15th verse. And the whole second chapter is, is just, uh, it's just a, it's just a good, good book, uh, chapter to read. And it's talking about Christ all through this uh, mm -hmm. chapter. Uh, and we, if you've been following uh, with us on Thursdays, you know God, Jesus is our, is our shepherd. He protects us, he guides us, uh, he shelters us. There's no need uh, when you're with Jesus because he, he takes care of us, the ones who follow him. And uh, so then when we get to the 15th chapter, and this kind of goes with that uh, 21st verse of 1 John 5, 21. Mm -hmm. uh, because God is talking to us here, telling us about, you know, what he expects from us, that we need to guard ourselves against idols, false mm -hmm. teaching, moral mm -hmm. compromises, mm -hmm. anything that would take God's place in our, in our heart. Mm -hmm. If it's taking a place in your heart and you know it's not a God, then that, that's a sin. It's wrong. He's not first. He's not like what he said in Deuteronomy, that he comes first. And we're supposed to love him with all our heart, all our soul, all our might, with our entire being. When we start pulling away from that, then we, we 
you get into a bad place, into a dark place. Uh, 15 verse says here, do not love the world of sin that opposes God and his precepts, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now that is not my words, that is his words. And that's what gets us in trouble all the time. All the time. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust and sensual craving of the flesh and the lust and longing of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources, you know, that's your money, your bank account, your home, or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, things that you may have put away or tucked away in your safe deposit box. Uh, it says, so in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but from the world. And you know, anything that's coming from the world got a hook on it. It always, the world don't give you anything. Mm -hmm. Not anything. It says the world is passing away. And with its lessons and shameful pursuits and ungodly longings, but the one who does the will of God and carries out his purposes lives forever. And that's a, a gift God has given us. An 18 verse said, Children, it is the last hour, the end of this age. And just as you heard that the Antichrist is coming, the one who will oppose Christ and attempt to replace him, even now, many Antichrists, false teachers, as it was saying there in the, you know, 1 John 5, chapter 20, first verse. Um, False teachers have appeared, which confirms our belief that it is the last law, because the Bible speaks of this. It says they went out from a uh, seeming at first to be Christians, but they really, but they were not really of us. Because they were not truly born again and spiritually transformed. See, the only way you're going to have the love of God in you mm -hmm. and he's in your mind and he's a road on your heart, you had to belong to him. You had to be one of his children. Mm -hmm. Because we are always be children to God because he takes care of us. We can't even breathe for ourselves. He, he does all of that. He has a set purpose for all of us. He has a path that we're supposed to be walking in. See, we were not born here for ourselves as the world say. Mm -hmm. This is me time, my time. I want to do what I want to do. You know, God is the one who we're supposed to be following and be led by the Lord. See, there were many in the Old Testament that felt that they didn't really have to do what God wanted them to do. And they did, and they perished. Uh, that's even in Deuteronomy, if you turn there real quickly, just a minute. Uh, it's in the first chapter of Deuteronomy. You know, when God tells us to do something, he, he wants it done. He don't want us to do it on our own time. Mm -hmm. Because, see, we don't have no time. All the time we have belongs to God. But so, so many people think they own their own time and they can do what they want to do when they get ready to do it, but they can't. And in the uh, first chapter of Deuteronomy, I just uh, briefly go over it. They see they had been in the wilderness for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord <clears throat> carried, uh, carried and protected. You can see us here in the uh, first chapter in the 29th verse. He was uh, telling them to go out. Maybe I go up a little, a little further than that, a little before that. Okay. All right. All right. On the twenty-first verse, it says, "Behold, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and take possession of it, just as the Lord." The God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Now, I've already told you about that fear. Mm -hmm. 
But see, they were fearful. Then the 22nd verse said, And then all of you approached me and said, Let us send men into the land before us, so that they may explore and search the area for us and bring back to us word regarding the way we should go and the city we should enter. And you see how they already questioned God. He had told them what to do, but they got to send somebody out ahead of them to check things out. Like, God don't know what he's talking about. See, when God tells us to do something, he just wants us to just do it. I think that's what some of us should just do it. And uh, so as it said on the 23rd verse, the plan pleased me, and I took 12 of your men and one man from each tribe. Because it was 12 um, tribes. Mm -hmm. And even before that, Moses had appointed different men over different tribes. He appointed some over a thousand, some over a hundred, some over fifty, and some over ten. And he had officers and judges because they were constantly running to Moses with all kind of uh, matters and, and complaints. Mm -hmm. So that they would be dealt with, he appointed all these different people. And he, he told them, the one thing about it, he said, you shall, in the 17th verse, you shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear and pay attention to the cases of the least important as well as the great. You shall not fear man that fear again, for the judgment is God's. Mm -hmm. The case that is too hard for you to judge, you shall bring to me, and I will hear it. And then that way he, he had a set up for them when things got too out of hand and they couldn't make a good decision to come back to Moses. But here God was telling them to go out and possess the land. Mm -hmm. And then uh, going to the 24th verse, they turned and went up into the hill country and came to a valley called es Esco and spied it out. Mm -hmm. So they were up there looking. Yeah. And then they took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and bought it back. Bought it down to us and they reported back to us. It's, it's good land, which the Lord our God is about to give us. About to give He had already told them that they could, they could have it. If they would just go, you know, possess it. Mm -hmm. And said, you, you, yet you were not willing to go up and take possession of it but rebelled against the command of the Lord, your God. So they, they just don't want to listen or do anything God told them to do. And say, you murmured and were ill-tempered, discontented in your tents, and said, because the Lord hates us, he bought us from the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. to hand us over to the Amorites to destroy us and, and they for some reason they had forget they were in slavery yeah they were beat down they were uh, mistreated they wasn't even uh they didn't have days that they could worship the Lord because I remember they when Moses it said on the Lord right they, they didn't blame it on Moses right they blamed it on the Lord because they didn't have a love in their heart it wasn't on their mind yeah. and so uh Spirit. Scared. And see, when you, you have all that fear in you because you don't have the love of God in you, His love, when mm -hmm. He wraps His love all around you, you feel His shelter. You feel His comfort. You know that He's not going to abandon you, that He has you in His hand. So you will go forth and do what He tells you to do because you know you're not in front of Him. Now that you want His children and He's the shepherd, you're being led. Amen. And then it, it says here, uh, so they were going on and just carrying on. The 28th verse said, where can we go up? Our brother's spies have made our hearts melt in fear. Mm -hmm. See, that's what happens when you be telling somebody something. They came back and didn't give a good report. God had told them to possess it, and that should have let them know they didn't have nothing to be fearful of because God had already bought them out of Egypt. And said, um, so the fear that they always got somebody to blame it on. And made our hearts melt in fear and demoralized us by saying the people are bigger and taller 
than we. The cities are large and fortified all the way up to heaven. <laughs> oh, oh. And besides, we saw the giant like sons of the Anakin, Anakin there. Mm -hmm. Now, I wonder if David would have felt that way. He never would have went up against Goliath, would he? No, because they were giants. Of, he was one of the same race. Right, but what happened? David had so much love in his heart for God when he spoke bad against the Lord. Mm -hmm. It angered David, and he went forth with five stones in his hand. That's all he had in a slingshot. See, he didn't have that fear because he had the love of God in him. And he knew God was before him. He had already been out there shepherding in the flock, and, and uh, mm -hmm. the Lord allowed a lion to come upon him and a bear to come upon him. He was able to uh, to kill him, but he knew it was only because of God. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have this fear in him. It says in the 29th verse, Then I said to you, do not be shocked, nor fear them. Mm -hmm. This is what God told him. It says, The Lord your God who goes before you will fight for himself, just as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. Mm -hmm. And in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried and protected you, just as a man carries his son all the way which you travel until you arrive at this place. Mm -hmm. Yet in spite of this word, you did not trust that is, confidently rely on me and believe the Lord your God. So it said, who went before you along the way in the fire by night and a cloud by day to seek a place for you to make camp, to show you the way in which you should go. Mm -hmm. And it said, and the Lord heard the sounds of your words and he was angry and took a oath, saying, Lord have mercy. Not one of these men, these evil generations, shall see the good land which I swore solemnly promised to your give to your fathers. As mm -hmm. Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, son of Jephunneh, he shall see it, and to him and his children I will give the land on which he has walked because he has followed the Lord completely and remained true to him. Now see, we have to remain true to God and follow him. Mm -hmm. And you will be blessed. It said, the Lord was angry with me because of you saying, not even you shall enter Canaan. Mm -hmm. And then it said, Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall enter and carry and strengthen him for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. And so uh, then after all of that, uh, they came to God talking about they were going to go fight. They, they changed their mind. It says here in the 42nd verse, but the uh, 41st verse, excuse me. It said, then you answered and said to me, we have sinned against the Lord. See, anytime you tell God what you're not going to do, and he didn't give you a commandment to do something. That's a sin. It yeah, says, it is, but you told him something else in between there. It said, moreover, you little ones whom you say would be prey, and your sons who today have no knowledge of good and evil shall enter into the into Canaan because they didn't have no knowledge. Mm -hmm. They were so young. And uh, because they couldn't go against the parents, they were being taken care of by the parents. And said, I will give it to them and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn around and set out for the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. That's what they told them to do. Right. They didn't want to do that. They didn't want to do that either. Then, then you answered and said to me, we have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight, just as the Lord our God has commanded us. So you equipped every man with weapons of war and regarded it as easy to go up into the hill country. But the Lord said to me, say to them, do not go up and do not fight, 
for I am not among you because of your rebellion. Otherwise, you will be badly defeated by your enemies. And so I spoke to you, but you would not listen. See, we gotta listen to God when He's talking to us. They wouldn't listen. They were instead you rebelled against the command of the Lord, mm -hmm. acted presumptuously, and went up into the hill country. They did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then the Amorites who lived in the hill country came against you and chased you as bees. It was so many of them. They were just all around. And you know, you can't outrun a bee. They just be on you, stinging you. And I uh, said, and uh, chase you as bees and struck you down in sour as far as the homa, the homa. And you returned and wept before the Lord. But the Lord would not listen to your voice, nor pay attention to you. And so that's what happened to them because they, they decided to you know, do what they wanted to do. Uh, they didn't want to listen to the Lord. And they evidently didn't, didn't love the Lord. And they wanted to do what they wanted to do. Which they, which they thought was right. But it was wrong. And that's what happens when you get the world in your life. You start thinking like the world. And making decisions like the world makes. Instead of just doing what God tells us to do. Mm. And I go back to the uh, second chapter. First John, the second chapter. And so we had to we had to obey God. We really did. And uh, I was I left off in the the nineteenth verse in, uh, in the second chapter. Of course, there's always somebody telling you something. That's why we had to be you know cautious of different doctrines we hear and different false teachers, people telling us something that's not in the Word of God. It says, they went out from us seeming to be Christians at first, but they were not really of us because they were not truly born again and spiritually transformed. But if they had been us, they would have remained with us, but they went out teaching false doctrine so that it would be clearly shown that none of them are of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted. This is what us believers. You have been anointed. And you have been set apart for God. Mm -hmm. Prepared by the Holy Spirit. Because as I prayed, the Holy Spirit was, uh, God was letting me know because Jesus, he ascended, but he didn't leave us without the Holy Spirit. Amen. He sent the Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit. And it's to be prepared by the Holy Spirit, and all of you know the truth because He teaches us. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit teaches us. He illuminates our minds and guards us from error. So we have to listen. It says, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, mm -hmm. but because you do know it. Because no lie, nothing false, no deception is of the truth. Mm -hmm. It says, who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Anybody who tells you that uh, Jesus is not the son of God, not Jesus Christ, and not the son of God, not the Messiah, the anointed, they just lie. It says, this is the antichrist, the enemy, the antagonist of Christ. The one who denies and consistently refuses to acknowledge the Father and the Son. And even in the Old Testament, they refused to acknowledge God. They refused to acknowledge that he had bought them, uh, led them out of Egypt and uh, from slavery. They were always murmuring and complaining about he should, should have just let them stay there. Uh, but because of the love of God, he he brought them out of Egypt so they could worship him, but they didn't want to worship him. As you read through the Old Testament, you'll see they, they uh, built them a golden calf so they could worship a false god. Mm -hmm. And the, the 24th verse says, um, 24th 
23rd, excuse me, who denies and repudiates the Son does not have a Father. The one who confesses and acknowledges the Son has the Father also. That crosses all um, traditional religious lines. Mm -hmm. It does. <laughs> but it's the truth. For the two main religions. Right. The, besides Christianity. Right. You know, it's three main religions. Right. Two of them don't believe that. I know they don't. So woe be unto them. But we're given the word so everyone has the opportunity to hear this, to hear the truth. And it says, as for you, let that remain in, in you, keeping in your hearts that message of salvation, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning remains in you, you too will remain in the Son and in the Father forever. Mm -hmm. And this is why uh, God had the uh, uh, prophet of writing this in 1 John, the 5th chapter, the 21st verse, uh, telling them to um, guard their heart. He said, little uh, children, believers, dear ones, guard your, yourselves from idols and false teaching, moral compromises, or anything that would take God's place in your heart. Because we don't want anything taking a place of God in our heart. Uh, the 25th verse in the uh, second chapter, 1 John, second chapter, says, uh, this is the promise which you himself promised us eternal life. And these things are written to you with reference to those who are trying to deceive you, seducing you and leading you away from the truth and sound doctrine. And as you mm -hmm. said, we have many, we have different religions out there now trying to lead people away. Well, they uh, say that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. One right. of them. And one of them don't recognize him as the Son of God. Right. And it says if you don't, then you know, you, you that's the only way. Uh, to well, they don't it. recognize him as the anointed. But that mean, that really means a lot to Christ, mm -hmm. the Messiah. Right. That's the one that God said would come and redeem his people. He's the only one who can. But and could I was do that. listening to um, some broadcasts, and they were saying that they believe that this other man, <laughs> they stand on what he's saying, mm -hmm. um, Islam, well, you know, that. that worship in Mecca. Yeah. They stand on different religions. All right. They said, yeah, God is up. There's only one God, but they got their writings from somebody else. Well, you know, they have, like I was saying, you know, their false uh, doctrine. Uh, and you know, the Jewish never received them. Right. Amen. 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 That's why you got to really know the Bible for yourself. You got to know a little bit about the other religions too, or you get drawn into them. Nobody is. Well, you have to, if somebody's teaching you a different doctrine than what you heard, you need to examine it see what they're really teaching. All right. Going back to where I was. Um, but most people who don't believe don't care what neither three religions say. Well, um, people of the world, that's where this all stems from, uh, love not the world. We have people in the world because the world is Satan is the god of this world. We don't believe in none of them. They just believe in hate. Kill, steal, and destroy. Take what they want. All right. <laughs> don't they? Amen. All right, back to, to my lesson here. All right. Uh still in first John the second chapter, the twenty. 7th verse. 
This is for you with the anointing, the special gift of preparation which you receive from him remains permanently in you. And you have no need for anyone to teach you, but just as his anointing teaches you, giving you insight through the presence of the Holy Spirit, and that's how we get our teaching and our insight. Mm -hmm. All things in, is true, and it's not a lie. And just as his anointing has taught you, you remain in him and be rooted in him and knit to him. It says, now little children, believers, dear ones, remain in him with unwavering faith. He don't want us going to the right and left. He wants to remain with him, steadfast with him. Mm -hmm. So that when he appears at his return, we may have perfect confidence and not be ashamed and shrink away from him at his coming. If you know that he is absolutely righteous, you know for certain that everyone who practices righteousness, doing what is right and conforming to God's will, has been born in him. See, if you really believe in God and you love God, you're going to uh, follow him and do what he tells you to do. You're not going to be um, trying to go out on your own and trying to do something that he hasn't told you to do. Because you want to please God. You love him. You want him to continue to love you. And uh, you don't want to be rejected. God don't want to be rejected. Everything you have in you is of love. God wants God want us to be the same way toward him. You don't want to love one just doing you any kind of way. And they say they love you. You don't disrespect you or do things they shouldn't. God don't want us to do that to him either. And uh, we shouldn't anyway because God is, he is the uh, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. We can't even treat him as a person because, uh, you know, it says uh, in Psalms uh, 118, uh, it's different parts of the Bible, not just in that uh, book. It tells us through that we just some, uh, some we like a flower, uh, something that, uh, is here one day and gone the next day. And God is here forever. Mm -hmm. You can read that in James. Let me see. It's even in the book of James. Mm -hmm. I think the first chapter here. Uh, let me find the verse. I just mm -hmm. read it recently. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we can't compare him to anybody. I just use the love one because that pierces a lot of people's heart when they're in love with somebody and they. Uh, things don't go right. Uh, but uh, first, first Peter talks about that too. Well, it says, or even here, uh, it says in the 10th verse in 1 James, it said, and the rich man is to glory and being humble, talking about humbleness, true enough, by trials revealing humanity, human frailty, because we're frail. It says, mm -hmm. knowing true riches are found in the grace of God. But like the flower of grass, he passes, he will pass away, because we just pass away. Right. It says, for the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass, its flowers fall off and the beauty fades away. So, too, will the rich man in the midst of his pursuits uh, fade away. So, you know, mm -hmm. we can't put nobody above God, no man, no woman, no child, no Nothing. God comes first, and that's what he was saying in Deuteronomy. That's what he's saying in 1 John 5, 21. That, you know, no one comes uh, before him. And we're not supposed to have the love of this world in our hearts. He, he has to be in our heart and remain in our hearts. Uh, now, if you stay in 1 John, and we're going to go here uh, to the fifth chapter. I know I have a little time left. We're going to the fifth chapter. It says, everyone who believes that a... What chapter or what? First uh, John, fifth chapter. Yeah, I think we stand in the first John. Fifth chapter, it says, everyone who believes with a deep abiding trust in the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointing, is born of God. That is reborn from above, spiritually transformed and renewed and set apart for his purpose. And everyone who loves the Father also loves the child born in him. And 
it says, By this we know without any doubt that we love the children of God, expressing that love when we love God and obey his commandments. It says, For true love of God is this, that we habitually keep his commandments and remain focused on his precepts. And his commandments and his precepts are not difficult to obey, not for those who love him. In fact, we don't want to disappoint him. Mm -hmm. It says, for everyone born of God is victorious, overcomes the world. That's what he was trying to tell those uh, stiff-necked Israelites, you know, when he was trying to tell them to possess the land of the Amorites, that they were going to be victorious. He had already helped them come out of Egypt. Yeah. from slavery, and he would have a, a what was that, the far, the, the, the moon at night time so they could the, see. The far by night. Far by night. The far by day. To right, them from the right. Day. And he was always in front of them. But if you don't believe, if you're that, scared and don't believe, it ain't going to happen. That's, that's why they never make it. They were scared. They were scared. They weren't scared to <coughs> say what they wanted to say. And I, right, they, that was a lot of God. They did not fear God. See, people who do not fear God, they say anything to God, but they fear everything else. Um, you know, an insect, a bug, a, a spider, a mouse. Uh, they hear God talking to them, and they just talking back. You're not going to do that. I mean, I got things to do. I'm, I, I'm working my flower garden. My flower garden, wash my car, I'm waxing. And uh, so, you know, getting to the fourth verse here, it says, For everyone born of God is victorious, overcomes the world, and has victory, that has conquered and overcome the world. And our continual persistence and faith in Jesus, the Son of God. So we had to be consistent. And continue, you know, to have faith. I says, who is the one who is victorious and overcomes the world? And Jesus overcame the world. It is the one who believes and recognizes the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. And this is how you overcome. It says, this is he who came through the water in the blood. His baptism, his death. Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. It is the Holy Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. He is the essence and origin of truth itself. It says, for there are three witnesses, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three are in agreement, their testimony is perfectly consistent. If we accept, as we do, the testimony of men, that is, if we are willing to take sworn statements of uh, fallible humans as evidence, which we shouldn't, we already said we're all humans. The testimony of God is greater, far more, Authoritative for this is the testimony of God that He has testified regarding His Son. It says here, the one who believes in the Son of God, who adheres and trusts in, relies confidently on Him as Savior, has the testimony within himself because he can speak authoritatively about Christ from his own personal experience. Hallelujah. The one who does not believe God in this way has made him out to be a liar. No one have mercy. Because he has not believed in the evidence that God has given regarding his son. And the mm -hmm. testimony is this. God has given us eternal life. We already possess it. And the life is in his son resulting in our spiritual completeness and eternal companionship with him. And he who has the Son by accepting him as the Lord and Savior has the life that is eternal. He does not have the Son of God by personal <laughs> faith. Does not have life. Who, he who does not have the Son does not have life. And so <laughs> uh, it says here again 
It says, these things are written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, which presents all that Jesus is and does, so that you will know with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have eternal life. This is a remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to have before him, that if we ask, and this is where people get in the net, but you, you had to believe in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You have to accept him. He, he's dwelling in you. Then you can do this. It says that we ask anything according to his will that is consistent with his plan and purpose. He hears us. And if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears and listens to us whatever we ask, and we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us the request which we have asked from him. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin that does not lead to death, he will pray and ask on the believer's behalf, and God will hear him. Give light to those who sin that is not leading into death. There is a sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for this kind of sin. It says all wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. One can repent of it and be forgiven. And it says we know with confidence that anyone born of God does not habitually sin, but he, Jesus, who was born of God, carefully keeps and protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. So we we under the protection. It says we know for a fact that we are of God, and the whole world around us lies in power of the evil one. So the world is in the power of Satan, opposing God and his precepts. And again, I ended, as I said, as I, in the beginning, uh, and we have seen and know by personal experience that the Son of God has actually come to this world and has given us understanding and insight so that we may progressively and personally know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. That is the true God, the eternal life. Little children and believers, dear ones, guard yourselves from idols, false teachings, more compromises, and anything that would take God's place in your heart. That's the end of my lesson. Amen.